Hello, everyone. And thanks for tuning in to Cloud Live. My name is Christopher Succi, and I'm a technical account manager at Cloud Health by VMware. The session you're about to view is about AWS savings plans presented by our partner, Groupware Technology. Groupware is a value-added reseller located in the Bay Area, and they utilize the Cloud Health platform as their engine for both billing as well as cost optimization for their customer base. I've had the pleasure of working very closely with today's presenters for the past three years. They're veterans of the platform and have a passion for helping their customers save money. We have John McGivern, Senior Director, Cloud Billing and Optimization Services, Parker Stevens, Cloud Systems Engineer. Be sure to submit your questions in the chat box throughout the session and stay tuned for the live Q&A afterwards. John and Parker, take it away. Chris, I appreciate you introducing us today. Uh, we're gonna jump right into the presentation. What we wanna talk about today is something that was announced last November uh, by AWS, and it's called AWS Savings Plans. Many of you have probably been aware of savings plans, maybe not know all the details, and we're gonna walk people through that as we need to know all the details because we advise our customers on it each day. So with no further ado, let's get into the presentation and talk about savings plans. We'll talk about what the difference is between reservations and savings plans, how to maximize your savings with savings plans, how to estimate savings plans and use cloud health as a very valuable tool in the process and show you some real world results. So what's the matter with EC2 reservations? They've been around for years. Uh, they've, they've been very popular but we still have customers who are afraid of them or don't use them. And what are the reasons we see from them? The first reason is that they're restrictive. And with that, those restrictions comes limitations in how you can run your business and adjust to technologies as you need to. The second thing is they lack flexibility. If you want to change things along the way, many times you can't, or you're, you could lose significant savings or actual commitment dollars if you do. They're also risky. If something changes in your environment and you don't need, you're not going to be able to use them, they could cost you heavily. And the last part of it is even if you're using convertible RIs, which are much more flexible, they still require monitoring and management. So you do have to watch your environment with EC2 reservations. They can save you significant dollars, but they do have some downsides. So what the heck are savings plans in this new world? Well, there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, de details on this slide. This is straight off the Amazon website and you're welcome to go to it. There are two types, EC2 instant savings plans, which are a little bit more restrictive, and compute savings plans, which take away almost all of the restrictions related to RIs. So regardless of all these words you see on this screen, I want you to remember two things that come with savings plans. The first is that you're no longer buying a particular instance of an OS and a region, you're actually buying hours of compute. So when you make a savings plan purchase, you're buying a dollar amount. And we're going to walk you through how that dollar amount works. The other thing I want you to realize is that with the compute savings plan, AWS has finally given us the easy button. For those who don't want to deal with the hassles of management, there's finally a way to just buy compute power and not have to monitor and manage it all the time. So with that, let's get into these two types of plans. So we talked about the discount structure and the fact that it's equivalent to what you're used to, but what happens on the restriction side? And the answer is that it becomes much less restrictive. If you're used to standard EC2 RIs, you must buy them at the region, the OS, and the instance or instance family level. If you are going with the equivalent EC2 instance savings plan, you are only tied to the region and the instance family. So you can change instance types within the family and you can change OSs within the family, giving you a lot more flexibility. 
when it comes to the compute savings plan with convertible EC2 RIs, you're only tied to the region. However, you are buying a specific instance in OS. If you are careful in the monitoring and exchanging, you're, you can constantly use them, but it does require work to keep an eye on them and to exchange them when you need to. When we talk about the easy button, this is where the compute savings plan shines. You now are buying an hour's worth of spend anywhere in the world on EC2, Lambda, or Fargate. And what this means is that if you need to change parts of your infrastructure, or even if you want to go from an IaaS-based EC2 platform to more of a serverless Lambda platform, you can do so. The savings percentages may change depending on the technology, but you will still be able to save specifically related to your compute, no matter what you're running anywhere in the world. And so it really has become a very powerful way to save money without tying yourself into the specific technologies that in the past, perhaps you couldn't change when you wanted to change them. So with this compute savings plan, which we're spending a lot of time on, how are my discounts applied? And this is where it really gets interesting. If you have different instance types in your infrastructure, such as X1, C4s, M5s, I3s, and T2s, and say they all have different percentage savings. Well, the way it works with the compute savings plan is that for any given hour, it will give you the maximum savings first. So if you have X1s, it's going to take them first at their 70% rate. And these are just for example purposes then C4s, M5s, I3s, and T2s. So the bottom line is, in any given hour, no matter what happens to be running out there, it's going to maximize your dollar savings across your infrastructure. However, there's one thing that we wanna make you aware of, and it's, thing called, it's this thing called account affinity. And with account affinity, what happens is, is that, you, when you buy a savings plan, the savings are going to get applied in the account that you bought it in first. So say going back to that previous slide, you have an account which has mostly M5s in it and an account that has X1s in it and another AWS account that has C4s. And if you were to go make a savings plan purchase and you were to buy it in the M5 account, what would happen is it's going to apply the savings to all of the instances in that account first. So it wouldn't maximize your savings because M5s don't get as much savings as X1s. Now, after it exhausted your purchase, it's going to move on to the X1 account and the C4, but you're not going to maximize your savings because you bought in an account that had already had lower percentage savings instances in it. So what do you do about this? For years now, Amazon has been recommending this idea of an admin account. And the admin account has traditionally been used to track one-time purchases, and it's been used more for financial transactions. It didn't necessarily have as much value on the back end. But in this new world, if you have an admin account that has no physical resources in it, a truly a zero dollar account, you can make your compute savings plan purchases in it and it will immediately leave that account and go to the highest savings first. So to the X1s, then to the C4s, then to the M5s. So in this new world, you want all of the customers that we've helped bring up savings plans in their infrastructure, we have helped them procure a, an admin account 
which allowed them to ensure the highest savings for every hour along the way. So with that being said, I'm gonna turn it over to my colleague Parker, and he's gonna walk you through some of the nuts and bolts as to how to use uh, savings plans in the real world. Thanks, John. So as I walk you through the next couple of slides, I wanted to again reiterate that we're really focused on the compute savings plan, the easy button. Uh, and I wanted to talk about some additional benefits that you can gain with the easy button. So here's a map of AWS's regions around the world and a couple of regions that will be coming soon in the orange. So I had a customer that was working with one of their own customers who had some POCs running in some of the more remote regions in AWS. And they were looking to cut down the costs, but they realized that they'd have to commit to a one year RI in order to get some discounts on the on-demand compute. The customer then talked to me about it and they said, you know, this really puts a hamper on innovation when we're not really planning on being in this region for more than six months and I have no choice but to run on demand. Now with compute savings plans, you're no longer restricted to a region because they just don't care where the compute is. Compute anywhere in the world is now accessible to uh, those discounts with a compute savings plan. So just think about you know, your global footprint and it, it no longer matters where you're, where you're at, you can now use the compute savings plan to get discounts. So how do we go about estimating your commitment amount, uh, your hourly commit with a savings plan? I'm super stoked about uh, what I'm about to show. Cloud Health has been allowing us to use their beta of the savings plan explorer to quote out savings plans for our customer base. And here's what, what it looks like. On the left nav, you'll find the savings plan explorer under recommendations and reservations. And it's super simple. You choose your evaluation period of 30 days or seven days. You choose the billing account, and then you have three options. You can just say, give me the max savings that I could possibly gain, or choose a specific hourly dollar amount to commit to, or specify a total coverage percentage amount. And then you hit refresh recommendations, and it gives you six tiles. These six tiles just show your one year and three year options, whether it's a no upfront, a partial upfront, or an all upfront purchase. They give you the breakdown of the hourly commit, uh, if there's an upfront cost, what that looks like, the effective discount, the total coverage rate, your monthly savings dollar amount, and your lifetime savings dollar amount. So depending on your budget or you know, what your long-term commitment would look like, uh, you've got a few options and it's easily presented. Now, if we click on the one year no upfront, we get some fancy uh, digital graphics here. And at the top, we have three uh, tiles. And the first one will actually include your existing RIs or existing savings plans if you have them, because you can have as many savings plans as you want. It's not just a one and done type thing. You could have a $2 compute savings plan, and then a month later, you could purchase a $5 compute savings plan, and they'll stack. So this would take into account existing coverage. And then this middle tile here will give you your total coverage after making this purchase. And then the third tile on the right gives you your monthly savings amount. <clears throat> Below you have three different lines. And I wanted to start on the orange line. This line represents what your commitment uh, is and your total cost would be after it's been applied. And then the dark blue line is the dollar amount, the applied value of the commitment. And then the teal line is everything above that uh, what would probably stay on demand after you made the commit. So Cloud Health will have more details about this in their public beta. Um, and you can talk to your TAM if you want more information. But so far, I've been using this, and it works really well, and we love it. So once you've made your quote, you, you know what you're going to commit to, maybe it's you know, $20 an hour or even 50 cents an hour, how do you make your purchase? In the AWS console, in that admin account that John was talking about, the no resources, empty account, you'll go to cost management, savings plans, and then on the left, there's the purchase savings plan button. And this is again, really easy. I'm very happy with how AWS has laid this out because it just gives you two options your compute savings plan, 
or your EC2 instant savings plan. And I wanted to showcase again, uh, what the restrictions are with the EC2 instant savings plans so that you're aware of them. You choose your term and then you choose the region and then you choose the instance family type. But since we're talking about compute savings plan as the, the primary, you know, the easy button uh, that we like to work with, here's what the full screen looks like for compute savings plans. You again would choose your term, one year or th three year, and then choose the dollar amount that you're committing to. So in this case, I put $20 down and then I chose a no upfront. At the bottom, you have your, no your upfront cost, if there is any, your monthly recurring charges, and then the total one year commitment that you're committing to. Now, the monthly recurring charges there in the middle it often can confuse people. Um, it's not that this is an additional charge on your AWS invoice each month. This is the total commitment that you're on the hook for. So AWS expects you to use $14,600 of EC2 in the next month after you make this purchase. So, so long as you're using more than that in your EC2, you'll be okay. But if you went ahead and made this purchase, but you only used $14,000 of EC2, you'd still owe AWS $600. So keep that in mind when you're making a purchase, that it is a commitment and you have to pay the total commitment one way or the other. Once you've made the purchase, how do you go ahead and track it? And this is what I'm really excited about. If you haven't noticed, Cloud Health uh, has added a new category under the assets page and it's called cost management, and there's a savings plan button here. And in order for anything to populate here, you do have to update your read-only IM role in Cloud Health. So again, talk to your TAM and get that updated. It's pretty simple. But on this page, you'll be able to track both types of savings plans, your EC2 instance savings plan um, and your compute savings plans. And I wanted to just highlight again, it'll show the regions for your EC2 instance savings plan and the M4 in this example of the instance family type. But then with the compute savings plan, it won't populate anything there because compute savings plans don't care. Now, again, if you haven't noticed, Cloud Health added another piece in the dashboards dropdown. It's called the savings plan dashboard. And this is where you'll track your usage and your savings. And I'm really excited about how this was put together because this dashboard, in my opinion, is able to be uh, understood by multiple types of individuals in your organization. So your director of engineering has a chart that he would uh, benefit from. The finance team has charts in here. Your executives could view this and understand it. It's, it's really slick. So uh, I'll go over a couple of the different reports. On the top left here, we've got a weekly coverage uh, report showing the different types of RIs and savings plans. And I wanted to specifically point that out because you can have a mixture of RIs and savings plans in your environment. And they do stack in a logical way, and John will point that out later. But uh, in this case, we're looking at standard RI, compute savings plan, convertible RI, and then your on demand in this weekly chart. But if you had an EC2 instance savings plan or spot instances, they would also show up in this chart. On the right, we've got a cool pie chart, and it'll show you the percentages of what's covered and what's not, and by what type of coverage. There's another chart showing your hourly EC2 fees uh, in a month's view. Uh, it shows your EC2 compute costs before RIs and uh, savings plans were applied, and then what your actual EC2 cost was. And then on the right, you get the waste chart, and this is used for two purposes. Um, in this example, the current month was April. And so we have two columns for the savings plan that are unused, and then the EC2 RIs that are unused. Now these are burn downs. So you wanna watch these throughout the month because they show up on the first and then they burn down so long as you're using your EC2 properly. And if they disappear at the end of the month, it means that you met the commitments and you will not be on the hook for any fees. If you were, on the hook for unused RI fees or savings plan fees, they would show up in the historical months here. And so this is a great way to track whether or not you've uh, met your commits or if you were going with, uh, if you had some unused uh, RI fees and maybe you needed to change some of the infrastructure to meet those commits. Another report that you'll find on the savings plan dashboard is the savings plans uh, and where they're applied by the instance family. 
And this is an hourly view. Keep in mind, each hour is represented in two hour blocks in Cloud Health. Um, but it shows you, you know, where your savings plans are applied at any given time throughout, you know, the last, uh, looks like about a week here. And uh, this can be really neat to see when you change infrastructure. And John has an example of this that I'll get into in a moment. The last report on the savings plan dashboard is an EC2 compute costs and an hourly view, uh, just showing the different types. A lot like the very first chart that I showed, but this is in an hourly format, showing you your different types of coverage on any given hour. So what about some real world results? Those are always the best examples. And at Groupware, we do have uh, a lot of customers and we split them up between different individuals on our team so that we can give uh, appropriate attention to each customer. So I wanted to give a couple of examples from my own personal customers. And in this case, we had a customer who had some standard RIs represented in the dark blue here, and they were expecting them to expire. And we saw them expire. The customer was kind of hesitant to re-up, but then we talked to them about compute savings plans and EC2 instant savings plans. And because their workloads were very static, they did not have any uh, reason to change their infrastructure for the next year, um, and they wanted to get the most discounts that they could, they went with the EC2 savings plans and re-upped effectively their RIs by going with the EC2 instant savings plans. And you can see that they went very close to that 100% uh, mark. There's very little on-demand left in this customer. I believe that they're running at about 96% coverage. And they're very happy with the results. Uh, they're very comfortable with it. It's not as restrictive as standard RIs, and they do plan on continuing to purchase EC2 instant savings plans after the remaining of their standard RIs expire. Now, on the flip side, here's a customer who's very, very frustrated with standard RIs. They had three different engineering groups who didn't always communicate the best uh, that they could, and they were always getting hit with unused RI fees. And this caused a lot of headache for their uh, AP department and just frustrations in dealing with, you know, extra $2,000 in charges that they shouldn't have incurred. Uh, so we talked to them about compute savings plans because they had at the time about 45% of their environment running on demand. Um, and we were able to work with them to purchase a compute savings plan to cover an additional 15% to alleviate some of that stress of running so much on demand, but then also for them not to have to worry about having unused RIs in the future. And this customer has been very happy with the results and the way that Cloud Health presents the, the savings plan dashboard. Um, and they plan on purchasing more savings plans once their uh, standard RIs expire. So with that, I wanted to pass it back over to John. He's got another example and he'll close us out. Go ahead, John. Thanks, Parker. I wanna jump back to this screen for a moment because this is the screen where I told you about the fact that the savings get applied to the highest value first. And I have a real world example for one of my personal customers that I wanna show you that turned out to be very fortuitous for them. So what happened with this customer is they had some RIs expiring and they did not want to re-up them. The RIs happened to be in the R R4 family and the R4s get a higher savings rate than say a T2 or a T3. So if you look in this chart, and I realize it's a little small, you will see the red and the blue, the teal here is T2, T3s and T2s. Well, when their RIs expired over here, you will notice that the R4s immediately picked up the slack at the expense of the T2s and T3s. What happened on their actual monthly bill is it didn't go up nearly as much as they expected because by using the compute savings plan, it was optimizing their savings and it really worked out well for them. So this is a real world example where the highest value was applied first and even though they, they expired some RIs, it didn't turn out badly for them because it, they took over a lot of the savings. 
So why do we like savings plans and why do our customers love them? If you think back to this chart, with in, in reservations, you're restrictive. Well, a lot of those restrictions go away with savings plans and with the compute savings plan, they go away completely. When it comes to flexibility with the compute savings plan, you now have flexibility to run what you want, where you want on any of the technologies that you want and still be protected that you have savings. And the bottom line is now you have a safety net. You can be innovative without necessarily losing money due to making commitments or God forbid, stopping innovation because you got to wait for the commitment to end after one year or three years. And ultimately, rather than all this monitoring, finally AWS has given the easy button. It allows you to focus on the technologies that you need to do while still committing to a level of spend that is reasonable to you and save money for your company without hindering your innovation. So Parker and I wanna thank you for being with us today. We look forward to answering your questions. And at this point, I'm gonna turn it back over to Chris to close us out. Thanks, John and Parker for that great session on savings plans. Now it's time for our live Q&A. Your chance to ask John and Parker anything you wanna know, please click on the Zoom Q&A link above this session to keep the conversation going. Thanks for attending and we'll see you at the Q&A.